Hi YouTubers, Mike here on Sonix413 and we've got something really unusual for you here today. This is not the usual model airplane fare. We're fixing a Roland HP 800 digital electronic piano. Uh, actually the, what we're going to talk about uh, is widely applicable because a lot of these uh, made in Japan electronic keyboards have similar features internally and so uh, if you've got for instance uh, a couple of notes that don't work on your electronic keyboard uh, we'll be addressing that kind of a problem here uh, in, this, in a little later in the video but the other problem that we're going to begin with um, actually began uh, my buddy would be playing this keyboard during a performance and the MIDI channel would change back to channel 1 which is a digital grand piano and he had it actually controlling a MIDI sound generator and and so it, it really mixed up the the uh, performance it, the, the wrong sound would come out uh, and this was totally random but um, the first thought was that maybe it was a a, a MIDI signal in error like a, a channel change um, signal coming down the MIDI wire. Well, um, that was a possibility because it, the, the unit did have a MIDI uh, auxiliary um, sustain pedal on the, on the floor, and uh, we thought perhaps that would, uh, maybe it was uh, sending a, a MIDI signal in error. Well, we substituted a totally manual um, foot switch, and it seemed to, the problem seemed to go away. Uh, so we thought that was cured, but then it, it recurred. Uh, the, the, the next thought was that uh, there was some coincidence between this would seem to be happening more often when the piano was being played hard, uh, striking the keys harder. And uh, there seemed to be some validity to that. Uh, and actually, at one point, my friend was playing the piano, and when one of these uh, MIDI channel changes occurred, he noticed a flicker at at the same exact time on the little red light that is the power indicator. Uh, and of course, uh, when you stop and think about it, if if you have interrupted power to this board, it's going to reset to the to the factory presets and uh, the grand piano sound channel one and that's exactly what was happening so we suspected uh, of course an interruption to the power supply and looking at the way it's set up right there is where the AC comes into the unit on the back panel up here to a push button it's a push on push off uh, main power switch and I believe it's just labeled power on the top panel and if you follow those leads down there's your power transformer and it's coming off uh, on this side going to this power supply board and if you look at it there are some fuses there that um, needed to be checked and of course my friend checked those out and also a good look at those clips to make sure that they uh, that they were holding the fuses firmly and there's a, a main fuse up here it's the highest amp rating on the board it's 3.15 amps you can see a little full wave rectifier there so it's a very simple power supply board and uh, I, I began by going around and just tapping and uh, Noticing that if I tapped on this back heat sink, uh, I could induce the little flicker in the power light. Um, and then I went around and tapped a little bit in different spots of the board, and I found it was more sensitive in this area. And then when I jiggled this plug, uh, that would induce the fault every single time. So... It was just a simple matter of unplugging that and cleaned it with a little um, contact cleaner. 
reassembled it and amazingly enough after that you could jiggle it and uh, there was no interruption to the power supply the light would stay on solid so that problem I believe is uh, has been addressed and we're all set to try that but this unit actually has another problem too and that is um, there's a few notes in the lower half of the keyboard that just do not work dead notes so we're going to uh, take a break for a minute and come right back and talk about what to do if you've got one two or even a few notes that don't work on your piano all right now we get down into the nitty-gritty but first if you made it this far reach down there and hit that subscribe button would you I'll tell you what YouTube wrote me a letter and they said they're gonna send me to YouTube prison if I don't get a thousand subscribers and if, if they send me there I'm gonna to have to look at cat videos all day so reach down there hit that like and that subscribe help us out here on the Sonics 413 channel all right now let's see where your missing notes went to uh, as I said earlier this keyboard had I think three or four notes in the in the bottom half that just didn't work now if you've got a couple of notes that don't work let me explain how this system uh, functions and actually a lot of the electronic keyboards are real similar to this the first problem that you might have is that you could have dirt on these contacts let me show you how these work this is a little the white um, material is a non-conductive silicone material and the little black pellet looking things in there are also silicone material but they're actually conductive they've got some sort of additive to them and if you put an ohm meter to them you'll see that they're they're very conductive now if I lay this over you can see that um, if I put it in the right spot it sits directly above these little printed circuit traces right here and if you check it out what you'll see is that this first set of four little pads is the lowest note on the piano this next set of four is the next lowest note and so forth all the way up 88 keys worth of those and uh, what happens is the little black conductive silicone pad there's two of them one stands a little higher than the other one and so when the key comes down and pushes those little pads against the printed circuit board um, two things happen First of all, because one is a little taller than the other, it's going to make contact with, with the board a little before the other one does. And then subsequently to that, the second one comes down, contacts it, and there's some short time delay involved with that. And the uh, microprocessor actually translates that short delay into, it interprets it as how uh, how, what the velocity of the keystroke was so uh, that's how the piano determines whether uh, it, to play the note softly or loudly it, it's the time delay between the two contacts and of course each one of those little conductive pads uh, is capable of bridging the two adjacent contacts on the printed circuit board and uh, those are all tied in uh, basically through a diode matrix that uh, translates that into a signal um, and uh, takes it to the, to the main board. And uh, let me show you just for a second what those diode arrays look like on the back side of this panel and and what you'll notice is that actually uh, 
a lot of other brands are constructed exactly like this. The uh, uh, I've got a Korg keyboard at home that has the similar conductive uh, pads under the keys and uh, a Yamaha I believe looks just like this also. Now if we look down each one of those little windows you can see four little diodes and those are I don't I don't even see a number on them but they're just basically plain vanilla diodes what what they amount to is a one-way check valve for uh, uh, the flow of electricity and so as as each one of those contact pads is is bridged by the little silicone pucks um, current will flow through one or more of these diodes and then that signal goes to the uh, main board. Well, let's take a look at this side again. The, the first thing that can go wrong with this is that perhaps you've got a little bit of dirt on one of these traces on the uh, circuit board. Uh, in that case, or if you get in and clean it out, if you're in this deep, you might as well clean the board. Little contact cleaner on a soft cloth and just wipe these little contactor pads to clean them. Uh, and then, likewise, you can clean these silicone contactor pads. I would say warm dishwashing soap and, and then a real good rinse of warm water and that'll clean those off. Um, so uh, at that point you could reassemble it and uh, try it out. That should fix your keys, uh, your missing notes, if dirt on these switches was the problem. And I, on my own uh, Korg keyboard at home, that's exactly the problem I saw. My, the construction on mine was a little different. Instead of all these little separate pucks, the black little pucks, it has a continuous strip that goes along and, and uh, touches different parts of the trace. But basically the, the, the theory is the same, that, that the, uh, there are always two little switches on each key and, and uh, how closely together that signal comes in tells it how hard the key was struck. So that's the first step. Get this get these components cleaned out, put them back together, and in a lot of cases that will fix the problem. Okay, so cleaning those contact pads doesn't solve the problem and you've still got some missing notes. What else could it be? Well, the, the first place that I would suspect is this entire keyboard assembly. And what it consists of, and a lot of these machines are really similar to this, uh, is you've got these uh, printed circuit boards with the contact points printed on them. And because it's 88 keys long, uh, you can't very well make that all one piece. So it's split here, and then up here another split, and you've got three separate circuit boards. Now for that to work you've got to have jumpers to, to connect the uh, traces from between each section and what they've done is you can see these rows of solder joints here and those on the back side are receptacles for ribbon connectors which we took a look at a little earlier. So those uh, need to be verified uh, you could take them out and clean them, uh, reinsert them, uh, and then check between each point here and here with your multimeter and see if follow the um, traces that the ribbon paths take and make sure you've got conductivity on each one. Um, as I said, the other thing you can check is all those plugs on the back of this. Basically, it's a giant diode array, and by um, sensing which ones are conducting and which ones aren't, it puts together a picture of which notes to play. Uh, 
and as I say, a lot of the brands, Yamaha and Korg in particular, really have the same system under the hood. Um, so, uh, the next step for us was to actually check each and every one of those diodes with, with the diode checker function of a multimeter. It's a good idea to go ahead and unplug. There, there are three inline connectors that come from this circuit board, the keyboard uh, controller, that go to that main board. And once you unplug those three, those are the only connections to the rest of the machine. At that point, you've got this whole keyboard assembly isolated, and you can get in there with your diode checker, and you could you could flip it back and, and test right off the pigtails of those little diodes on the other side, or you could go from this side and just take each pair. And what you're looking for is for it to be conductive in one direction but non-conductive in the other. So that took a little while to do, but um, every single diode on the board checked out good. So uh, the next place to look is um, all these printed circuit traces. And uh, actually what you can see is that it's got little, um, little tiny circle test pad, test points, built into those traces so that you can put your multimeter on there without disturbing the functional uh, contactor pads that sit up under the keys. You don't want to damage that with your multimeter probes. So they've given you the little test points here. And you can take and put your multimeter between any given um, test point and then follow back to where it goes in, into the uh, a solder joint and, and check the conductivity through that path. And uh, of course where you want to start is the keys that don't work. Have a, have a look at, at uh, count up from the bottom of the keyboard or down from the top. Figure out which set of contacts is the non-functioning set and start there. Check those traces back to the printed circuit. Um, there's also a set of them that, um, well, if we go to where there's a junction between two boards and this is where the ribbon connector jumps on the back side of the board and you can see um, there's an empty set down at the very end where I suppose they could use this board and, and put another one and make that even longer or maybe use this one as a top one, whatever. Um, but um, that's the next place to check is um, all these points and, and f follow the traces back and in this case it's the ones that uh, the ribbon cables jump and it's, it's like um, eight line bus that goes from one end of the keyboard to the other and if one of those traces is broken you'll actually lose um, several notes along that line so uh, at this point we actually got lucky we, we started checking with a with a multimeter uh, up along these eight line this eight line bus that, that uh, follows the ribbon cable and at one point we detected that uh, we didn't have a path, uh, any conductivity. At, and so we got in there with a magnifier and a good light. Let me see if I can show you this. Do you see, do you see the little white spot on that one trace, right? Let me point it out. The little white spot right there. And with a magnifier, you can see that that's actually a missing spot in that copper trace. And uh, we actually scraped it off and, and, it's, and, and uh, revealed that damage. And what was visible was some mossy white, looked like battery terminal corrosion that was eating its way through that copper trace. Now, um, after cleaning it off, there's not really enough room there to make a, 
a little wire jumper at that exact point. But what we'll do is go from that point further back, prepare a little wire jumper, solder it from this point down the line, and it'll end up, um, let's see, right here, the second pin on this connector. So we'll make a, prepare a little wire jumper. There should be just enough room for it to sit here under the keys. We've got some plastic uh, rivet heads that hold those circuit boards in. Those have a little height to them. So if we stay below that height, we can insert a little jumper in there and uh, fix this. And uh, I've already gone in there by hand and, and just put a, a test lead across and we momentarily powered it up and uh, and jumped the uh, pads here on the non-functioning key and sure enough we got a nice clean note out of it so that little broken trace is the 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 cause of our several missing notes and uh, not surprisingly they all occurred downstream of that little break they were all um, to the lower pitch side they were all in, in this section so um, there you go some pointers that will maybe get you straightened out find out where your missing notes went uh, as I said the first thing to do is check the cleanliness of all the contacts if that doesn't work look at the, all the diodes and all the uh, printed circuit board traces. Um, that'll fix probably 90% of the missing note problems with these electronic keyboards. So uh, I wish you luck with yours. Thanks for watching the video. If you liked it, hit like and subscribe. If you didn't like it, uh, never mind. See you next time. <laughs> Bye. Epilogue. There is the jumper wire. And we've reinstalled the little silicone contactor strip for that first section. And let's give it the test. Chris? There it is. The missing note. Okay, it works. Well done. Bye, everybody.